Hello and welcome to today's webinar on using the digital collections at NEHGS and AJHS NEA. My name is Geneva Morse. I'm the Director of Education and Online Programs at the New England Historic Genealogical Society. I'll be moderating today's event. NEHGS is a nonprofit organization supported by our members and donors. We provide resources and expertise in nearly all aspects of family history and are pleased to offer this webinar today for our members and friends around the world. Giving today's presentation is Sally Benny, Curator of Digital Collections at NEHGS. Sally joined the staff in 2010 and works in the R. Stanton Avery Special Collections Department. She has an MS in Library Science with a concentration in Archives Management from Simmons College. She previously worked at the Schlesinger Library on the History of Women in America. Her interests include digital preservation, digitization, and genealogical research in Nantucket, Virginia, North Carolina, Cornwall, Finland, and Sweden. Stephanie Call is the Collections Management Archivist at the American Jewish Historical Society New England Archives and has worked at AJHS NEA since 2007. She is responsible for processing and maintaining the collections of the Jewish Heritage Center at NEHGS, as well as the day-to-day -day development and management of the center's digital archive. Stephanie received a BA in English and Jewish Studies from Mount Holyoke College and an MS in Library and Information Science with a concentration in archives management from Simmons College. She is a member of the Society of American Archivists and the New England Archivists, where she serves on the Education Committee. Over the last couple of years, Sally and Stephanie have collaborated on a project that will provide remote access to the unique archival materials held at New England Historic Genealogical Society and American Jewish Historical Society New England Archives. These materials include diaries, account books, unpublished family papers, letters, photographs, and much more. Up until this point, the only way to view these materials was to visit our library and archives in Boston. The product of this collaboration and the subject of today's webinar is the new online portal, digitalarchives.americanancestors.org. Sally and Stephanie will introduce you to this new site, how to access and use these online resources, explain what collections have already been digitized, and give you an overview of their plans for adding collections to the site in the future. I should clarify that these digital collections are different from our searchable databases that you may already be familiar with. If you're interested in, interested in learning more about those um, about searching those databases, I do encourage you to visit our site AmericanAncestors.org to learn more. At any time during the presentation, please feel free to write to write a question in the panel to the right of your screen. Stephanie and Sally will answer as many as they can as they can in the time provided. Uh, there is no handout for today's presentation, but if you click on the icon of a camera in the upper right hand of your screen, you can take screen captures. We're also recording this event, and starting tomorrow, you can easily go back and review any of the content from the presentation. All right, so I will now turn things over to Stephanie. Thanks, Ginevra, and welcome, everyone. Today, we'll be talking about our Digital Collections website, which is the homepage you see here, and which contains the digitized collections of the American Jewish Historical Society New England Archives, which from here on out, I'll refer to as AJHSNEA, and our Stanton Avery Special Collections at the New England Historic Genealogical Society, or NEHGS. Within this website, you will find letters, diaries, photographs, newspapers, business records, organizational records, and other materials for historians and genealogists with an interest in the Jewish communities of New England and the study of family history in America. The Digital Collections website can be found at digitalcollections.americanancestors.org. And you can also get there from the americanancestors.org website and ajhsboston.org. The site was formerly located at archives.ajhsboston.org and has been in use by AJHS NEA since 2012. This combined digital collections website is the culmination of a partnership between NEHGS and AJHS NEA that began in 2010 when our two then separate organizations developed an affiliation designed to enhance Jewish historical and genealogical research and the continued collection and preservation of Jewish history. In 2015, this partnership was further strengthened when the New England Archives of AJHS 
were permanently deposited at NEHGS. Today, the AJHS New England archives are now the cornerstone of the Jewish Heritage Center at NEHGS. For the past couple of years, Sally and I have been collaborating to bring our two repository materials together online for the benefit of all our users. That being said, NEHGS and AJHS NEA collections are quite different from one another, so we'll be addressing some of those differences and similarities in the webinar today. These differences can impact how you access, search for, and view materials. We hope you enjoy the results of this collaboration. So let's get started with some definitions that Sally and I will be using, um, a few acronyms and phrases. On the same page, when we say digital collections, we're referring to the archival materials from both repositories that are available online. Again, we're not referring to the databases that many of you are familiar with using online at AmericanAncestors.org. The repository is where the archival materials are located. It's important to note that both repositories fall under the NEHGS umbrella. For brevity, we'll say NEHGS to refer to the R. Stanton Avery Special Collections of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AJHS NEA when referring to the New England archives of the American Jewish Historical Society. Finally, open access means anyone can view the images online, no login is required, but request access is for AJHS NEA materials only. This means you will need a username and password to log in, and I'll go over more of that later. So I'm now going to hand things over to Sally, who will give an overview of what you can expect to find in the NEHGS digital collections. The New England Historic Genealogical Society began collecting manuscripts shortly after it was founded in 1845. After collecting for over 170 years, we have thousands of collections and millions of individual documents. Our manuscript collection contains a wide variety of materials on the families and history of New England, other regions in the United States, and several other countries. The collection includes family and personal papers, military records, church records, cemetery inscriptions, and family Bible records. We also have a large collection of unpublished genealogies, the records of several family associations, and the genealogical research papers of a number of well-known genealogists. Although our manuscript collections are a valuable resource for both genealogical and historical research, they are only available to members at the NEHGS Library in Boston. To help provide wider access to the collections, we began digitizing small collections in 2009 and made them available through the Digital Library and Archive in the library catalog. This was a step in the right direction, but the Digital Library and Archive has some technical limitations that make it difficult to use with large collections with multiple boxes of documents. Some of you may be wondering why we don't just put our manuscript collections online as databases on American ancestors. The databases work well for documents that contain a lot of names and dates, but indexing every name in handwritten documents takes a lot of time. Many of the manuscripts in our collection, like letters, diaries, and photographs, don't contain a lot of names, so they aren't a good fit for the current database system on American ancestors. This is one of the reasons why we decided to create a joint digital collections site with AJHS NEA. The new Digital Collections website can accommodate much larger collections, as you will see once Stephanie starts talking about the AJHS NEA collections. So now we have much more flexibility about what we can consider digitizing. Over time, we will be moving digitized manuscripts from the Digital Library and Archive to Digital Collections and updating the links in the library catalog, so you can easily find them in their new location. There are also multiple links to digital collections on the American Ancestors website. So far, we have five collections available through digital collections. Each one has a general theme. The five collections are family and personal papers, local history manuscripts, the William Bolin papers, French and Indian Wars manuscripts, and Civil War manuscripts. All of these are open access collections with content that is mainly of interest to historians, although it can be used by genealogists as well. We hope that opening these collections to the public will make it easier for historians, students, and others to find and use these collections in their research. 
Additional collections and manuscripts will be added over time. The Family and Personal Papers collection contains documents created by a variety of families and people in the course of their personal lives. The collection includes letters, photographs, poetry, and other material. There's even a volume of instructions for country dances from 1782. Among other things, this collection includes a series of letters to and from Benjamin Franklin and his sister, Jane Meekham. There are also letters written by several American soldiers who served in World War I. The Local History Manuscripts Collection contains manuscripts that focus on a particular location, such as court records, military records, photographs, and histories of a location or institution. To give you a few examples, this collection includes Captain Lane's Motorboat, a scrapbook on the history of a settlement on Malaga Island, Maine, as well as a collection of photographs taken in Putney, Vermont in the 1880s. The next collection, the William Bolin Papers, focuses on the papers of one man. William Bolin was the colonial agent of the Massachusetts Bay Colony from 1746 to 1762. His papers include petitions and memorials to Parliament and letters to government officials on the sugar trade, the Louisburg Expedition in the French and Indian War, and other subjects. The entire collection has been digitized and is now available online. The next collection contains manuscripts on four related wars, King William's War, Queen Anne's War, King George's War, and the French and Indian War. The collection includes letters, diaries, military records, and other material that document the experiences of New England men in these wars. The Civil War Manuscripts Collection includes letters, military records, and other material that document the experiences of Union and, and Confederate soldiers in the Civil War. Last year, we received a grant from the Cabot Family Charitable Trust to digitize five manuscript collections on the Civil War, the Howard Family Papers, the Chapman Family Correspondence, the papers of Captain Leander Gage King, the papers of Captain John T. Burgess, and the papers of Charles Carlton Coffin. These collections will make up the bulk of the Civil War manuscript collection. We are also adding other small collections of correspondence to and from Union soldiers, as well as other military records, like the 1st Kansan Colored Volunteer Regiment account book. We will continue adding new material to all of these collections, and we plan to add additional collections over time as well. And now Stephanie is going to describe the AJHS NEA collections. So first, I'd like to just talk briefly about our history. Founded in 1892, the American Jewish Historical Society is the oldest ethnic historical society in the United States, with the national organization now located in New York City at the Center for Jewish History. In 2010, the New England Archives of AJHS moved into the NEHGS building on Newberry Street, and in 2015, our archival collections were permanently deposited here. So now, although our collections are the cornerstone of the Jewish Heritage Center, we are, and we're a part of the NEHGS family, we are still associated with AJHS in New York. AJHS NEA collections include the records of synagogues, Jewish businesses and organizations, and the papers of Jewish families and individuals in the greater Boston area and New England region. Our collections include photographs, genealogies, artifacts, microfilm, correspondence, ledgers, diaries, and other records of intrinsic historic value that highlight the rich history of the New England Jewish communities. Because we have been digitizing our collections since 2007, we currently have just over half a million images available online for research in 70 collections, with another half million waiting in the wings to be uploaded to this website. The collections at AJHS NEA are cataloged as institutional records and personal papers. Institutional records are denoted by an identification or call number that begins with an I. For example, I-123 is the Jewish Community Relations Council. Institutional records are from community service, philanthropic, academic, cultural, and Zionist organizations, trade associations, synagogues, and burial societies. Some institutional records currently online include the combined Jewish philanthropies, 
the Jewish Community Relations Council of Boston, synagogues such as Kehillat Israel in Brookline, and mutual aid organizations such as the Moretz Relief Association. Institutional records often, but not always, contain financial records and ledgers, membership ledgers, correspondence of rabbis, administrators, or other staff members, publicity, publications, newspaper clippings, and governance, such as bylaws, constitutions, and meeting minutes. They cover the time period between the very late 19th century to early 21st century, with materials pertaining to World War II, the Holocaust, the persecution of Soviet Jews, the Vietnam War, dietary or kosher food regulations, immigration and the civil rights movement, among other topics of historical interest. Our personal papers are denoted by a call number that begins with a P, such as P803 for the Weiner family papers, and includes the collections of families and individuals. Some personal papers have institutional records within the collections, Examples are members of synagogues who were part of lay leadership, founders of Beth Israel Hospital, and those families who own their own business. Examples of family papers that include business records are the Stanley and Marianne Snyder family papers, which have some records pertaining to Elm Farm supermarkets, and the Elliott Snyder papers, which have records from Massachusetts Lumber. An excellent example of a collection like this, which is not yet online, is the Rabb Family Stop and Shop collection. Other personal papers online include the Weiner family, Dewey D. Stone, and Abraham Rocheski. So what kind of documents are usually found in the personal papers in our collections? Personal papers may include such things as diaries, correspondence, photographs, scrapbooks, newspaper clippings, business or organizational records, school records, artifacts, clothing, personal financial records, among other materials. In these collections, we have materials pertaining to World, War, World Wars I and II, the Civil War, immigration, business development, charitable relief efforts, and other areas of interest. Like our institutional records, our personal papers focus mostly on the late 19th to early 21st century. Online, in the digital collections, there are currently two collections that are a little bit different from the others. One is the Jewish Heritage Center of the North Shore. In 2013, several collections from the Jewish Heritage Center of the North Shore were donated to us by that organization. These collections are also identified as either institutional records or personal papers, but are contained in their own online collection. Personal and family papers, synagogues, and fraternal organizations from the North Shore of Boston, which includes the towns of Salem, Beverly, Lynn, and Peabody, just to name a few, can be found here. These are collections of synagogues, including Temple Shalom Sons of Jacob, organizations like Aleph Zedek Aleph, and families like the Richard Weiner family. These collections are primarily from the early 20th to late 20th century. The other collection that is different from the others is the Boston Jewish Times. The Boston Jewish Times covers mid-1945 to 1992, and unlike the rest of our collections, is open access, so you won't need a username and password to log in. This is an excellent genealogical resource as it contains obituaries, marriage and birth announcements, and issues that are missing or otherwise missing pages in the original bound volume are noted on the landing page for the collection. So we need to take a little bit of a detour here to address access for AJHS NEA collections. Because we mass digitize our collections and not everything is available in the public domain, we require users to create a free username and password at www.worldcat.org. Collections are available for anyone to use, however, just as our physical collections are. And again, the exception to this is the Boston Jewish Times, which is open and does not require you to sign in. Also, all of our collections are openly accessible from any computer in the NEHGS library. So if you don't have a username and password, and you're trying to look at a digital image in one of our online collections, you will see this text in place of an image. This item is restricted to only allow viewing of the metadata. To view the images and files, please log in and refresh the page.
To give you a better idea of what items look like online when they are restricted, this is a screenshot of search results with restricted images. As you can see, the collection name, the identifier or the call number, subjects and description, as well as some text snippets are available for you to view. As a reminder, if you have a username and we gave you access, but you still see the restricted image box, refresh your page. After a page refresh, your images should load without any problems. To create a free username and password, go to www.worldcat.org and click on create a free account in the upper right hand corner of your screen. You will be redirected to a page that looks just like this. When you have finished creating your account, email reference at ajhsboston.org with your username and the collections you wish to view. Once we receive your username and request, we'll provide you with access and a quick tutorial on how to use the collections. Once you have access, you can log in using the login link to the upper right hand corner. And again, this is just for AJHS NEA collections only. When you log in and select our landing page, which is what you're looking at here, you'll see more information pertaining to copyright, takedown and citation policies, and general contact information. You'll also see how our collections are organized. The larger a collection is, the more likely it is that it will have its own real estate in the digital collection site. We call these buckets. An example of this is the Jewish Community Relations Council, which physically contains documents in over 200 boxes. The majority of smaller collections are housed in online collection buckets by category. If you're looking for a family or person, look in family and individual papers. And if you want to search for synagogues or rabbis, look in rabbinical, synagogue, and Jewish education. When you have selected the collection or collection bucket you wish to view, you'll be brought to the collections landing page. Here you see that I've selected the Combined Jewish Philanthropies collection and am now on that collections landing page. The landing page will contain information about the collection or collections, links to finding aids, and if there are multiple collections in one bucket, links to each one. In addition, for larger collections, we list any link to related materials. And you can just sort of make out that related materials link down at the bottom there. You also have the browse collection and view finding aid links as well. So now that I've mentioned finding aids a couple of times, finding aids are essentially maps to the collections. They tell you what the collection is about, the materials it contains, and where those materials might be located via box and folder number. They're essential tools and we recommend you always look at our finding aids to see if we have what you're looking for. Our finding aids are available on our website at ajhsboston.org backslash collections. Okay, so we've talked quite a bit about our collections and access. So now that you know what you can find online, let's talk about how you can use the website. The digital collection site is fully discoverable, meaning that documents in the digital collections will show, in, show up in browser search results. There are a variety of methods for searching materials within the digital collections, which we'll go over in more detail in a bit. But you can conduct a full text search for names, subjects, dates, or other keywords. For AJHS NEA materials, you can conduct a traditional search using our finding aids. But you can also search just one collection or multiple collections in one repository or both. There are also a few ways to view the images. Page flip views allow you to mimic the experience of looking through a physical folder in the reading room, while the image and text view enables you to see the image side by side with the transcript of the image. You can also browse the search results that include thumbnails of images, and of course, just select an image to view on its own. What we hope more users will take advantage of is the Web 2.0 functions of the digital collections, 
which allows you to leave a comment or tag an image. This would be especially useful for any unidentified photographs we have in the collections. If someone were to identify people in those photographs for future researchers, it would be incredibly helpful. You can also download and print images, and most importantly, you can access the collections from the comfort of your own home. So now back to Sally, who will talk a bit about some search functions. Now we're going to go into more detail about how to use those features. First, we'll go to the Digital Collections homepage. To get to the homepage from AmericanAncestors.org, go to the search menu and select Digital Collections. You can also go directly to the homepage at DigitalCollections.AmericanAncestors.org. The login link to view AJHS NEA images is up here at the top. Remember that you only need to use this if you want to use AJHS NEA collections from home. The search option on the menu bar will let you search just the AJHS NEA collections, NEHGS collections, or all of the collections at once. The browse option will give you a list of all of the collections from each repository or list all of the items so you can browse through the list. The About section provides contact information and further information about image usage and copyright. From the home page you can search all of digital collections. Just use the search bar at the top of the screen. Alternatively, you can also use this page to search or browse by repository. If you just want to search the AJHS NEA collections, click on the AJHS NEA picture on the left with the hands. If you just want to search the NEHGS collections, click on the family tree on the right. Let's focus on NEHGS for now. So I clicked on the family tree and that brought me to this page which lists all of the digital collections from the NEHGS library and special collections. To see more, just scroll down. You can see a brief description of each collection if you hover over the picture. You can also get to this page by going to search in the menu bar and clicking on NEHGS in the drop down menu. Before we move on, I want to point out a couple of other things about this page. There is a list on the right that will allow you to find items by genre or format. For example, if you want to see all of the photographs or all of the diaries or all of the letters that are currently online, you can do that by clicking on the appropriate option. Also, the search bar at the top of the screen will only search through the NEHGS collections. Now let's pick a collection. I'm going to pick Family and Personal Papers on the left. And that takes us to the collection landing page for that collection. A collection landing page gives a general overview of the collection. It explains what types of materials you can find in the collection and describes the original sources used to create the digital collection. This page may also link to finding aids or catalog records, which give more information about the original manuscript. From the collection landing page, you can see a list of all of the items in the collection by clicking on the big teal button. There is a search bar up at the top. The search bar on a collection landing page will automatically search only that collection. And here are the search results after I do a search in this collection. The search results take up most of the page. The term that I search for is near the top of the screen. In this case, I searched for the surname Mecham, so my search term is listed under all fields, Mecham with an X next to it. You can have multiple search terms listed up here. If you ever want to remove a term from your search, just click the X to the right of the term. You can tell that this is a search of just one collection in a couple of ways. The collection is listed at the top after you've searched and then the name of the collection. There's also a list of collections in the left column. Collections that are checked are included in this search and there's only one collection checked here. 
to add a collection to your search, click it in this list. If you get too many results, you can also narrow your search by choosing one or more options in the left column. The options that you see here, also known as facets, will change from collection to collection and may also change if you are searching multiple collections. When you click, click on each heading, you can view a list of the options available in each category. These options are listed by popularity, most frequently used to least frequently used. Right now you can see the options for Creator. Clicking on any of these results will add it to your search, making your search more precise so you will get fewer results. If you want to look at an item in more detail, click on the thumbnail or the title on the search results screen. Now let's talk about searching in a little more detail. The basic search bar that you saw at the top of the home page will do a general keyword search across all of the collections. This means that the system searches all of the metadata fields or descriptive information for each item and it also searches the full text of the item if full text is available. The full text of most typed documents is available and a few handwritten documents have been transcribed, but most have not. The same basic search bar is on most digital collections pages as well, as you can see here. This screen shows the results of a basic search across all collections. Notice the text underneath each item. These are little previews of your search term in the full text transcription. If you want more information about an item before you click on it, hover over the title with your mouse and a small pop-up will give you some additional information. If you get too many results in a basic search, there are several options on the search results screen which will help you refi refine your results. One option is the facets over here, and notice that the options listed here are different than they were when we were searching just one collection. There are a couple of options here that you will only see when you're searching multiple collections. One of them is the access facet. From here, you can select Open Access to see only items that are open to the public, or Request Access to see items that require a login. The other is the Source Facet, which will allow you to narrow your search to a certain repository, so you only see items from the NEHGS collections or from the AGHS NEA collections. You can also sort your search results to help you find what you're looking for. You can click on a column header in the search results table to sort your results by that category. Right now, we're looking at a reverse sort from Z to A by subject. There's a little arrow right here that tells you that the search is being sorted by subject. You can also use the little sort by menu up here above the column headers. If you click on Relevance, which is the default option, a little menu will appear, which you can see here with additional sorting options. Now Stephanie is going to talk a bit more about advanced searches. Advanced searching is helpful when you know what you're looking for and don't necessarily need the digital collection site to suggest items for you to look at. In other words, you aren't window shopping. For example, you may know that you want to see what materials one or both repositories have from a specific town in a specific year range, perhaps Salem, Massachusetts, between 1920 and 1930. The advanced search function allows you to specify what field to search in, title, subject, description, or date, and in an effort to narrow down your focus. You can add another field to your search by selecting Add Another Field under the first search box to the left. To the right, you can add or remove which collections you want to search or not search. To deselect all collections, click on the checkbox. You can then check the boxes of as many collections you want to search through. Advanced searching is also how you can use AJHS NEA finding aids with our collections. Here's an example of doing a traditional search using the finding aids. This is used by researchers who have looked at a finding aid and know what they want to see in a specific folder. 
So as you can see, I'm doing a search for Dewey Stone, which is the collection name, in box one, folder six. And remember, you can view our finding aids on the landing pages for each online collection or on ajhsboston.org backslash collections. And here are my results for box one, folder six of the Dewey Stone papers. Once you have found an image to look at, and here we're looking at correspondence of Leander Thompson in the NEHGS collections, you'll see the image in the image viewer. The image viewer has a variety of tools at your disposal. You can use the plus or minus buttons right above here to make the image smaller or larger. The gray rectangle to the right will open the image up in the view image and text mode. And you can also fit the image to the window which makes the image small enough to view as a whole document, or fit to width, which makes the image larger, but will require you to scroll down to see it in its entirety. To the right is a column that will give you the opportunity to view thumbnails, page numbers, or the content title of the page you are looking at. This is also where you can create a reference URL, add a tag, or a comment, or view the page flip view. Below the image viewer is the object description. Depending on the repository, the way we describe the image, which we call metadata, will be quite different. This is an example of NEHGS's object description. All of the information that follows the categories of title, creator, contributor, even biographical history, is considered metadata. And anything that is hyperlinked, in this case, in the blue-green color, is searchable in the digital collections. If you were to select Leander Thompson in this description, the digital collections would produce a list of all items with Leander Thompson in them. AJHS NEA's description primarily focuses on the folder-level description or metadata for collections. Folder-level metadata basically means that we have the same terminology to describe a digital folder as we do the physical folder. So, if we're digitizing a folder in the Bernard Gorfinkel collection that contains correspondence to his family in 1916, that information on the physical folder becomes the information used to describe and locate the digital folder. This creates a one-to-one -one match between the digital collection and the physical collection and therefore matches the content on our finding aids. Aside from a keyword search, using our finding aids to locate materials in our collections is a surefire way to find what you're looking for. You can add your voice to our digital collections by adding a tag or comment to an image. To do so, select Add Tags or Comment above the image viewer or below the description. Comments are especially useful for other researchers who are utilizing the same materials. Perhaps you know who's in a photograph or have additional information about someone mentioned in the letter. Tagging is helpful for subject terms. As an example, we sometimes get requests for photographs with cars in them from early to mid 20th century. You may be somewhat of an expert on cars and see a photograph that features a 1949 Buick. You should tag it because you never know who you might help. And now I'll toss things back to Sally. Now I'm going to show you the other options for viewing items in the digital collections. Remember that you can choose your view at the top of the image viewer page. Click this button to switch to page flip view and this button to switch to view image and text. Page flip view allows you to look through an item page by page. It's similar to the experience of going through a folder page by page in the reading room. Turn the pages by clicking on them. You can also skip ahead by using the bar at the bottom. Click on close to return to the regular image viewer.
Image and text view is useful for items with full text transcriptions. This view allows you to view an image and a transcription side by side. You can also search the transcription of the entire document from this view and your search term will be highlighted in red in the text. There are thumbnails of each page at the bottom of the screen. You can use these thumbnails to browse through the item and pick a page that you want to view. If you find something in digital collections that you want to keep a copy of, you have several options. The first option is to download a copy of the image. Right above the, the image viewer is a download button. Click on it and you will see a menu of image sizes. Select the size that you need and then download the image to your computer. Another option is to print a copy of the images that you need. Click on the print button next to the download button and the image will open in a new window ready for printing. Both Stephanie and I have a lot of plans for the future of digital collections. We will continue developing all of the NEHGS collections that I talked about today. We will also be creating several new collections that will only be available to NEHGS members. These collections will include family Bible records, church records, handwritten and typescript genealogies, and early NEHGS membership records. We're also planning to add some books from our library collection to digital collections as well. In addition, we are working with the Congregational Library and several other institutions on a grant project to digitize early New England church records from our manuscript collection. These church records will be available both on the digital collections and on the Congregational Library's website. Stephanie, what are your future plans? Well, we'll be starting or continuing a few projects as we move forward with the digital collections. One project is the refinement of dis descriptive search terms or metadata to make it easier to identify photographs and documents that are handwritten or to point out to researchers certain topics that are of interest. We also hope to digitize the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society Boston records and make case files up to the early 1940s available online. And we'll continue to add and upload collections online and finally, start to transcribe handwritten documents so researchers can keyword search for those items. Thanks for joining us today. We'll now open it up for questions. And if we don't have an immediate answer to your question or we don't get to it, please jot down our contact information and email us, and we'll be happy to help you. All right. Thank you both, Sally and Stephanie, for your presentation. Um, so as Stephanie mentioned, uh, we're ready to tackle your questions. So if you have anything that you'd like to ask, go ahead and type it in the questions panel, and our presenters will answer as many as they can in the time provided. Um, so we have a question from Karen. Um, Stephanie, I think this is a, a question directed to you. Um, so Karen asks, if we already have a WorldCat account, do we need to make a different one for searching uh, the collection? Uh, no, your current WorldCat account username should work. We just need to know what it is so we can give you access. So um, feel free to email us at that reference at hhsboston.org with your username and the collections you want to see, and that should work just fine. Thanks. Now, uh, Pamela asks, um, how do we get to the genres to browse, such as correspondence or diaries? Um, Sally, I can bring up the, uh, the home page and maybe you can direct them through that. Um, so the way that you would get to that page is to click on um, Library and R. Stanton Avery Special Collections. Um, and then from there, there's a list of all of the NEHGS collections, with, and then there's a list of um, some of the possible genres to browse. You can also find information about what type of um, format a document is by looking through the metadata further down on the, the screen underneath the image. 
Thanks. Um, now, Karen asks, uh, is there digitized information on the HIAS records? Um, now, she asks about Chicago in, uh, in particular. Um, Stephanie, I know that we have a number of um, HIAS papers in, our, in your collection as well. Um, can you kind of speak to those and, and if they're digitized? So our collection is um, the Boston port records only. So anyone who came in through the um, Boston channels would be included in our collection. AJHS in New York has the New York records. Um, I don't know off the top of my head if Chicago has a highest office, to be honest, um, but it's possible that when they closed, their records went to the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society in New York. So you could certainly um, try AJHS in New York to see if maybe they have Chicago-related records. Um, but for us, it's, it's all, it's all Boston-related. All right, now um, Irene asks, uh, Steph, uh, Sally, I think this is a question for you. Is there any way to do a full name search without going through each collection individually? Uh, yeah, you can do um, a full name search just by doing a general search, um, just from the search bar at the top of the home page. Um, it's instead of having a a search with first name and last name like you would find on the American Ancestors database, it, the search system in digital collections is more like what you would find um, when you're using a search engine like Google that you could just type in the full name and it'll look for both first and last name in the same document. And uh, Sally, Laurie asks, um, can you look for information from individual towns in, say, the state of Maine, for example, Union, Maine, and how would you do a search for that? Um, one way you could try to just find items about a particular place um, is to do an advanced search and select one of the fields that has to do with place or location. Um, you can also just do um, a general keyword search for the town or the location. One thing I'm working on right now, and um, it's still a work in progress, so you can't get to it yet, is, is to have a, a list of subjects, names, places, things like that, that are found in in digital collections, so it's a little easier to, to get an idea of, of what is here. And uh, Sally, John asks, um, so the search box on the digital collections homepage, it, does that um, general search box, and here I can go back to the homepage, um, does this search box, um, does it search only one of the collections or both? The search bar at the top of the home page um, searches all of the collections unless you go into advanced search and change that. Um, the other possibility when it might only search fewer collections would be if you go into um, either the AGHS landing page or the NEHGS landing page, but by basically when you first go to the home page and you search, um, it searches all of the collections. All right, great. Uh, maybe just one or two more questions uh, before we wrap it up. Um, so Sally and Stephanie, can, um, can people request items to be digitized and added to the site? Sally, why don't you um, answer that first? We don't really have a formal policy um, or process set up for that yet, but we are certainly interested in um, hearing from people and knowing what kinds of things you're interested in seeing online as part of digital collections, so feel free to send an email to library at nehgs.org and let us know what you'd like to what you'd like to see here and um, 
we will definitely consider it and if depending on the resources that we have um, and the condition of the collection we'll see if we can fit it into our queue I'm pretty busy right now um, but I'm, I'm always willing to consider new new options and Stephanie what about um, requests for uh, materials from AJHS, any A? Uh, definitely, if people have, um, if they've looked through our website and they see a collection that doesn't appear to have been digitized, you can email us um, at reference at ajhsboston.org. Um, it's possible that we did digitize it, but it's not online yet. We still have about just over 50 collections that have been previously digitized, but we haven't um, uploaded yet. So there's a possibility that it's already been done, and, and that'll just sort of give us the, the boost to get it done faster. Um, if it hasn't been digitized, it's a question of time and resources, but um, we can certainly um, keep that on the list of, of things that people are interested in. Now, um, Jean asks a good question, um, and I think if, if someone does want to request materials, this might be um, a good thing to keep in mind. Jean asks, what types of uh, materials are easiest to digitize and post online? Um, Sally, do you want to answer that? Well, it depends. Um, in general, things that aren't bound are easier to digitize. Um, items that are in good condition, so anything that is particularly fragile, um, something that is restricted or that might require repair um, before we can digitize it, that would be more difficult to do. Um, we can do bound material, but it, it depends sometimes on the condition of the binding and how tight the binding is. There's some bindings that are very difficult to get um, completely open flat, so it can be difficult to read words that are close to the, um, the inner margin. Um, <sighs> I think that about covers it, but it, it really depends sometimes also on, um, we have to also consider restrictions on copyright and any, um, any restrictions that the donor or creator might have placed on the collection as well. Thanks. Um, now, Stephanie, uh, Susan asks specifically about the uh, Stop and Shop collection that you mentioned, um, and she says that is of interest because uh, for, you know, for family history reasons. Um, when do you expect that to be available online, or is it already available online? Uh, it is not available online, um, but it is one of the top collections that we have. Um, identified in terms of trying to get it up fairly quickly. Um, again, it, it sort of is about time and, and resources, but there are a couple of different things we can look into to try and maybe get some of the materials online, maybe some photographs to start with. So it is something that we're, we're looking into. Definitely email us at reference at ajhsboston.org to sort of put your interest and request in writing. That, that always um, sort of helps us out in trying to um, get some of these things pushed to the front of the queue. Great. Well, um, thank you, everyone, for your questions. Um, if we didn't get to your question or if, if something comes up as you start to kind of play around with the site, certainly contact us either at reference at ajhsboston.org or if it's um, an NEHGS collection that you're using and you have questions about, um, please contact contact library at nehgs.org. So our digital collection site is live and we do encourage you to explore the collections already available and send us your feedback. Um, and as I mentioned, you can reach Sally or Stephanie at the email address, addresses on the screen. Um, but I'll also include that information in my follow-up email to you later today. 
So thank you again for joining us. As you leave the event, you'll have the opportunity to fill out a survey and give us your feedback on this presentation. As we continue to expand our webinars and online offerings, any and all feedback is extremely helpful and appreciated. If you'd like to access more how-to resources or learn about upcoming online educational programs, please visit our online learning center at AmericanAncestors.org slash education. I hope to see you at our online programs in the future. Goodbye for now.